praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can everybody please stand for a prayer on this Hallelujah. morning? Lord, we thank you for this day. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for life, health, and strength, Father God. We thank you for being in this place, Lord God, on today, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and kindness, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us yet another day, Father God. Oh, God, we ask that you come into this place on today, Father God. Oh, God, that your Holy Spirit rest in here, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we pray that lives are changed, Father God, that your people are set free on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for those that enter into this place, Lord God, with burning hearts, Father God. We ask that you allow them to release it on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God. Oh God, you have your way like never before, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for a time such as this, Father God. Oh God, we thank you for being in the land of the living today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Us, Lord God, because somebody didn't make it on today, Father God. So that's enough to give you praise, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for it right now, Father God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, who died for our sins, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, so we ask that you continue to forgive us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Us. We ask that you correct us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We ask that you show up in a mighty way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, we ask that you regulate our minds, Father God, that you shift our hearts, Father God. Oh, God, you give us hearts to love your people on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God, for being intentional with our lives, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God, for how you sit high, Lord God, and you look low, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you that we're allowed to cast our cares upon you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Allow us not to worry, Father God. Allow us not to worry about tomorrow, Father God. Because today has its own worries, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you for this mighty praise team, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Allow them to render praise unto you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit to rest in them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. As they continue to praise unto you, Father God. As they continue to worship unto you, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you for them right now. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, thank you and pray for those that are on their way, Father God. Oh, God, you give them traveling grace and mercy, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you for those that are in the house on today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Because in anywhere else, Father God. But they're here on today, Father God. And they're in Jesus, Father God. They're expecting signs and wonders, Father God. They're expecting miracles, Lord God. Oh God, they're expecting a change in their hearts, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for them right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we pray for the leaders of this house, Lord God. Oh God, you allow them to decrease, that you increase in them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, you allow him to render a word on today, Father God. That we can take it until Wednesday, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, we 
give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise that is due unto you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and just put your hands together and worship the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know that Jesus is your everything? Hallelujah, he's all that and some. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is my everything? And some, and some. Hallelujah, can we give God one more hand, clap of praise? Let's do it. Hallelujah, good morning, Facebook and YouTube. We welcome you to Restoration Bethel Ministries, where we're going to magnify the Lord, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just shout hallelujah? hallelujah. And lift your hands in total adoration unto the Father. We're going to worship together on this morning.
come with me, I just sing that. Sing everything. Everything. Keep going, sing everything. of your situation, no matter where you're going Hallelujah. through, no matter where you're going, God is in control. Come on and just Hallelujah. shout that God is in control. Yes, he is. I need y'all to talk back to me on this morning. Come on and say, God is in control. God is in control. Now come on and just clap and let's exalt God for who he is, and that is amazing.
Jesus, El Shaddai, Elohim, my provider, in Jesus, oh Jesus, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you, don't give up on God, cause he won't, he won't, he won't give up. Don't 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 give up. Exalt him right now. Come on, let's love on God. Just love on God. Just love on God. Just love on God. Let your worship. Let your worship. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up on you. Oh. Don't give up on God. Oh, no. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up on What's you. What's the time? Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. And he won't. Cause he won't. Praise right there. But he'll not give it up on you. That's enough all in itself to give God praise. Because he has not given up on you. I don't care what you have done.
you have said, where you have been, God hasn't given up on you. Because if so, you wouldn't be standing here, sitting here today in the house of God. Hallelujah. Come on, to give a praise for not giving up on you. Even when you wanted to give up, God didn't give up on you. Even when you didn't know how, God say, I got it. God say, I got it. Yes, it's all in the master's hand. Come on and say, it's all in the master's hand. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, man. Make some holy God noise in this house. Yes, you got the right to praise him. You got the right to praise him on the day. After everything you've been through, God is still keeping you. Yeah, from danger. Let's see. Oh, yes, God. I thank you for not giving up. Praise team, I thank you. I thank somebody high five and tell them, thank God for not giving up on you. Yeah, give somebody a high five. Let them know you ought to be glad. You ought to be excited. After all of that worry you did, after all that pouting you did, after all that crying you did, after all that complaining you did, after all of that worrying you did, your God didn't give up on you. You got a right to praise him. Don't nobody know what you did been through. Don't nobody know what's been on your mind. Don't nobody know how close you were to giving up. Yes, Lord. Don't nobody know how you didn't know how you was going to pay that bill. Come on and say, but God. Come on and say, but God. You better, you better say it like you know him. But God praise. Come on and say, I got a but God praise. That couldn't nobody do it but God. I didn't know how it was going to be done, but God. Yes, I didn't know how I was going to make it, but God. Yes, come on and say, I got a but God praise. Yeah, I got a but God praise. God, God has been good to me. Hallelujah. God has been good to me. That's all right, Elder Frank. Just know how good God has been to him. Yeah, he said, I got it for myself. Yeah, for myself, God, I got to. Yes, I could have lost my mind. I could have been gone. I could have been dead. But God, but God. Yeah, pain in my body, but God. Yeah, in the hospital, but God. Up at night, but God. In the name of Jesus, but God. God, 
couple of minutes to pray. I'm going to give y'all a couple of minutes to pray. I'm going to give y'all about two minutes to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Don't you worry about the track. Come on, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On this Palm Sunday, Jesus was getting ready to enter Jerusalem riding on the donkey. This represents Passion Week. Yes, he had a passion for his assignment. Yes, he wasn't going to allow nothing to deter him or to stop him. And what? Come on, tell the person next to you, tell him he did it just for you. Yeah, that's why he didn't give up. He did it just for you. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's enough to get excited. Yeah, that's enough to get excited that he died just for me. Yeah, just make it personal. He died. He died for me. Oh, my God, but he didn't stay there. Come on and say he got up. He got up. Glory to God. Give him praise for getting up. Glory to God. He's good, he's good, he's good. Ah, never mind. Never mind me, never mind us. Ah, hallelujah. Don't think that we crazy over here. We want to we wanna welcome our guests. We don't want y'all to think we crazy at RBL. But we just don't mind giving God a little praise in here. After everything that I had done, after all the mess that I was in in my life, and God kept me, after all the wrong I had done in my past, hey, oh my God, oh my God, you may be seated in the, in the house of God, in the presence of God. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Well, do it one more time. Oh, 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 oh,
y'all, y'all gonna make me break out my choir director's anointing. I'm gonna have to get me a little wine. Hey, ah, God is just that good. Come on and say, he's just that good. Yeah, he's better than good. He's great. You really can't put a name on him. He's just God. Yes, you say, I am that I am. That means that he's everything that you need him to be. Hallelujah. Come on and give God one more hand clap of praise. I thank God today. It's Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus began to go into Jerusalem, even though that is that's not my, my message. I preached additionally according to this day years ago. But... But God has, hallelujah, to God, hallelujah, to God be the glory, be the glory. all that he has done. son Jesus to die on the cross for us over 2,000 years ago he made it possible for us to go and enter the throne room for ourselves. when we have a need when you have a situation when you have a problem you're able to God go to God for yourself you don't even need the pastor you can go to God for yourself come on and say I can go to him for myself Yes, and Jesus gave us that access. He made an outlet to give us access. Come on and say access. And we thank him today uh, because of his great sacrifice that he made for us. I know that as he entered, they were praising him, saying Hosanna, laying down the palms for him. But the men turned around and wanted him crucified. Sometimes it's it's funny that the same ones that can lift you up kind of can be the ones that tear you down. But the key to that is he didn't let it stop him. He did it because of his unconditional love. Yes, he's not like us. He's not like man. He didn't allow that to deter him. Even though they turned to their backs on him, spit on him, called him all type of names. They beat him, but it didn't stop him. Come on and say it didn't stop him. Yes, he went all the way through in the plan and the purpose that God had for him. And I thank him for that, for being good and not being selfish and thinking of little old me. Yes, uh, that he loved us enough. He loved me enough to sacrifice for us. Praise is what we do. We give him glory. We give God honor. Come on and praise him one more time as we get prepared to get into the word on today. I believe God has given me a word through the Holy Spirit to uh, give to you today. It's not just uh, pertaining to a Passion Week or Palm Sunday. 
we're dealing with something that I believe that, that we all need and we, we are challenged with, with, with warfare. And at times, warfare is more intense than others. And you got to understand, Jesus went through warfare, spiritual warfare himself. Okay, during the week of Passion this week, I believe it was on Thursday, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was ready to give up. And the day before he was crucified, yes, he, he was challenged in so many ways to where he was in the garden. And the Bible says his sweat was as great drops of blood. Uh, it was that intense, that stressful, that he was sweating blood. And he wanted to stop. He didn't, in his natural man, let me say, in his flesh, he wanted to stop. Said to his father, if it's willing, allow this cup, allow this challenge, allow this situation to pass me by. And he grabbed hold of himself. That was warfare going on right there. I don't know if you all remember the Passion of Christ. I haven't seen it in years, but it really did something to me. I've read the Bible, read the story, but for me to actually see, you know, visualize in a movie format, I believe that they've done a great job with the passion of Christ um, and as he was walking the enemy was walking with him moving with him and when he was betrayed of Judas Judas had an assignment so that, that's why we have to understand that it's not against you and somebody else the enemy will always use somebody to try to stop us and to get us uh, off track, and actually, that's that's in my in my main text that I'll be going over. I want to uh, come from the book of Ephesians, chapter six. Ephesians, chapter six. I'm not for sure if I'll get through all of it today. I want to take my time because we're truly uh, in a in a more intense season of warfare. Sometimes it seems like when God is blessing you real good and you're receiving, you know, things, or you you. You see the manifestations of certain things uh, coming to pass in your life, you know, not too long after that, it, it seemed like attacks get intensified, you know, because we are, we go through different seasons, you know, but we're not to lose focus when we go through those times of, of attack, because it has been times in my life where things were just seemed like everything was going good, and then out of nowhere, and you all witnessed to that, you all can attest to that, that just out of nowhere, come on, say out of nowhere, it might be out of nowhere to us, but nothing catches God by surprise, he's omniscient, he know everything, you know, so can't nothing happen to a believer unless he allow it to happen, so all we got to do is do our part, and, and, and if something has come up on you, like Job, he said, though you slay me, I'm still going to trust you, God knew everything that Job was going to go through. And he was with Job through, through it all. And Job did not give up. Job did not, he did not give in, even though he was in his natural man. And he had questions. And even Job's friends uh, tried to say it was something that Job had did. But it wasn't nothing. It was just God knew that he was the man for the job. And if you're going through something and you're, you're dotting all your I's and crossing all your T's. And, and, and it seems like you're still under attack just know that you're the man or the woman for the job, okay, to go through whatever it is. Y'all not talking to me now. To go, I'm trying to help you out. You're the right person for the job because God has handpicked you. He has allowed it to happen. So don't get so much distracted by what you're going through. Just know who's with you while you're going through. That's the key. You got to know that who's with you, yes, in the midst of it all, that God is with you. All right, so Ephesians chapter 6, uh, ch uh, chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. I want to uh, start out there, and I have, have scriptures. I think that God revealed you know, something to me in here in a, in a different way that I hadn't, I hadn't saw. I love how the Word of God is and how the Spirit of God is that you can read the Bible or read a scripture so many times, but, but the word will hit you or apply to you wherever you are. 
you can uh, watch this message five years down the road and it will hit you in a different way. The word deals with you wherever you are in your walk, wherever you are in your maturity. It will, it will minister to you. So Paul is saying to the Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong. Come on, say, Lord, help me to be strong. Yeah. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power or in the, in the strength of his power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Then verse number 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil. Ah, I want to know if you got your armor on today. I don't want you to just put your armor on when you go to church. You got to have your armor on every day. You got to have your armor on when you sleep. The enemy will try to attack you while you sleep, in your dream, in your mind. Y'all not talking to me now. So you got to put on the full armor. Come on and say the full armor. Some of it, but all of it. So that the reason why you got to put on the full armor is, is so that you can take your stand. If you don't got on the armor, you can't take your stand against the devil's schemes. So he's a schemer. He's a trickster. And if you don't have your armor on, he'll, he'll get over on you. You come with all type of schemes. Have you ever uh, met a person that just uh, scheming all the time? You see them coming. You want to go the other way because you know that they, they scheme and they're about to try to scheme you out of something. See, we have to recognize and notice the devil and his schemes and all of his tactics. Verse number 12, for our struggle. Listen, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against anyone else but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for the season that we're in. We thank you for the word. Lord, we, we thank you that we have on our armor. Help us to keep it on, never to take it off. We are to wear it each and every day. Help us, Lord. And to, to move forward, help us to have a greater understanding of who you are and what you would have for us to do. Thank you for the season that we're in. We come against everything that's not like you, God. We come against our own self, our own mindsets. We come against traditions and religions in the name of everything that sets itself up against, against you, Father. Yes, let us take captive every thought that is not of you. Everything that's contrary to what your word says. Let us believe your report. Let us believe the word in the name of Jesus. Uh, let us not focus on what's not right. Let us focus on you. Help us that we may grow through everything that we go through. You want us to grow. You want us to change. So I pray that the word can change us in every aspect of our life so that we may become better and not become bitter by circumstances or by other people. Help us in our thought process, how we process things, God, how we think, what we think, who we allow in our mind, in our space, God. Help us to be protective of what you have given us, Lord, the spirit that you have placed inside of us, Lord, your anointing that you have given to empower us, to lead us and to guide us. Help us to uh, protect our anointing. Saturate us with your word today. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to come together collectively. Thank you for those that are watching by way of social media. Let them be blessed by the word and through the word. Come against everything that would distract your people from hearing what it is that you would have to give to us today. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for change. We thank you for deliverance. Yes, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Let everybody say amen. I want to talk today about spiritual warfare, okay? A simple spiritual warfare. I may have uh, taught on it before years ago, but God has brought it back to my attention. Like I said, today is Palm Sunday, and normally, traditionally, churches or pastors, they may preach about Jesus and his great 
triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and all of those things are, are great, you know. But I, I believe that spiritual warfare, for us to get a greater understanding of what it is, okay, and how are we to move through this life, okay, how are we to navigate so that we can be successful, so that we can be productive, okay, so that we can be confident and not lose hope. Okay, when you know what you're up against and when you know how to deal with the thing that you are up against because everybody is up against something. Everybody has something on their mind. Everybody have challenges. Okay, everybody have uh, things that they have been through. Uh, you may be in something right now. You may have just came out of something. You might be getting ready to enter into something. And so that's why we need to make sure that we're focused and we're ready and we're prepared for whatever it is that the enemy think that he's going to do to us, okay? He can't lay his hands on you unless God allow him to do that. All right, let me say that again. He can't lay his hands on you unless God allow. If you are a child of God, we are children of God. And so we truly thank God for uh, his presence. We thank him for his spirit. And so as I talk about spiritual warfare, the Bible said, finally, 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 be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand. Okay, let me take a pause right there. The armor of God, I know we have heard about the armor of God. You may have spoke about it. But the armor of God is given to every believer so that we can take our stand. I want you to know that you can't take the proper stand on this journey that we're on unless you have your armor on. I may not make it into all the pieces of the armor on today, but at least I want to get started because I want us to be successful. The enemy does not want you to succeed. He does not want you to prosper. He don't want you to focus on what it is that God wants you to, to do, okay? He wants to bring every distraction in your life to get you uh, out of the will of God. So it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That means that if I get into an argument with Minister Rogers, my brother, it's not against me and him. It's not against flesh and blood. And that's how the enemy will deceive us. That's why, that's one of his schemes. He will get you to be at odds with someone, but it's not necessarily the person. It is the spirit that has entered the person and causing the person to operate in the way that they do, and it really starts in the mind. You'll get a thought in your mind, and the enemy will run rampant from that thought. You'll think that somebody don't like you. And then guess what? Every time you see them, you're looking at them in a certain way. But you, you, you've never heard that from that particular person. But because the enemy has put that in your mind, that's why the Bible said, let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had the mind to go through on what his father wanted him to go through, even though in his natural man, he didn't want to do it in the garden, as I was just talking about. So, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, verse 12, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of, of evil in the heavenly realms. Look at all those things that we're up against. We're up against the rulers, uh, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. We live in a dark world. But Jesus has the light. And if he has the light, and he's in us, and we're in him, that means that we're supposed to light up wherever we go. If you go into a dark room, and you got Jesus with you, guess what? When you went into the room, it was no longer there. But if you don't have the light inside of you, and you go into a dark place, guess what? You're going to get lost because you can't see your way through. That's why the Bible said that his word is a lamp into my feet 
and a light. Come on, y'all, talk to me now. His word is a lamp into my feet. That means that if I have the word of God, wherever I walk, it's lit up. You know, we like to say it's lit. I'm lit. But are you lit? Ask that question. You know how you say, I'm lit. I'm going to get lit. Well, what type of lit are you? The word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my pathway. So it's a lamp into my feet. When I take every step, that means that I'm not walking in darkness. It's a light into my pathway. That means that my pathway is going to be lit up so I'm able to see where I go. I know what I'm up against because I can see. That's a dangerous place to be in a place where you can't see when the lights go out because you're going to be walking like, especially if you're unfamiliar with the place. Even in your home where you wake up and go to sleep every day, if it's pitch dark, you're still going to move a little slow. But, 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 but the, the better you know the area you're at, the better it is for you to maneuver. You got to know who you with. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide. So spiritual warfare, it has nothing to do with physical battles. It has nothing to do with physical weapons. Spiritual warfare is the inward and outward battle that we face against the enemies of God is not physical. Come on and talk to me. Say it's not physical, but it's spiritual. So spiritual warfare, it's an inward and it's an outward battle that we face against the enemies of God. Now, these enemies include Satan. The enemies include demons. And the enemies include sin, which can be the lust of the eyes. See something, and, 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 and you lust after it. You can see someone, the lust of the flesh, gratifying the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are three ways that the enemy tried to tempt Jesus when he was uh, in the wilderness. But once we became a believer, once we became a Christian, a battle begins between the spirit, which is our internal spirit, Okay, follow along with me. And the flesh, which was uh, the inward sinful nature that we were born into. David said, I was born into sin and shapen in iniquity. So we started out, okay, with some, with some challenges. David said, I was born into sin. We were born into it. After the fall of Adam, it, it, it allowed sin to run rampant. Because Adam was supposed to walk freely. He didn't know what sin was. His job was to obey, to produce, and to multiply. But when he fell short because he allowed the enemy to trip him up with his schemes, trying to make him think that he was missing out on something to go against what God had already told him. So you got to be careful of what God tell you and then the enemy try to make you think that it's not important. Got to be careful with the tricky thing about spiritual warfare that you're never really instructed to attack the enemy. This is when God was showing me this, and I said, wow, we're really not instructed to attack the enemy. Okay, I want you, I want you to make sure that you're listening now because Paul in encourages the Ephesians to put on the armor of God to what did I say? To stand against the enemy schemes. Now, in fact, see, you destroy Satan's domain not through fighting. You don't destroy his domain through fighting. But how you destroy his domain is by sharing uh, about Jesus. You destroy his domain by standing firm in doing good and obeying his will. Now, what it talks about, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. I talked about faith on Wednesday. 
So it says, fight the good fight of faith. To go before you in everything. The shield of faith is one of the pieces of the armor. I might not get to that today. But, but, but as you stand firm and as you obey God's will, as you do this, you need to be aware that the enemy is out to trip you up and make you ineffective. Spiritual warfare is not really about fighting. Come on and say it's not really about fighting. Okay, when God was showing me this, I said, wow, okay, this is, this is, this is good. The enemy wants to make you ineffective. Now, I want to go to James, James 4, 7, and 8. It sums the key to spiritual warfare. All right, James 4, 7, and 8. It says, submit yourselves then. Take me to James 4, 7, and 8. It says, submit yourselves. Come on and say, help me submit myself. You got to be able to submit yourself. Submitting means that, in other words, that you surrender. That you give yourself over to God. That it's no longer about you, but it's about God. Submit yourselves then to God. And then, what does it say? It said, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. See, that's what Jesus did when he was in the wilderness. He submitted to God. He resisted the devil. And the devil left. I want you to catch this now. This is, this is good. Verse number, verse number 8, it says, come near to God. So when we resist the devil and, we, and he flees from us, it says, come near to God and God will come near to you. And then it said, wash your hands. Got to wash your hands from all filthiness. Wash your hands. It said, James was telling you sinners, wash your hands. You sinners, and purify what? Your heart. You got to wash your hand because pretty much everything you do, you use your hands. So you want everything that you do, everything that your hands are touch, you want it to be blessed. But it can't be blessed if your hands are not clean. If your hand, watch this, it's not spiritually sanitized. Y'all remember when COVID first came out in the pandemic? Boy, you, you, you couldn't really find sanitizer. On my job, it was all sold out. Everybody was sanitizing their hands to where your hands were almost pale and ashy. You kept sanitizer bottles with you. You was making sure everything was clean. I was coming in. My wife wasn't playing around. She had a, a can of lights all around. No, sh- making sure that everything was disinfected. See, we have to be spiritually sanitized, making sure that we're always clean and making sure that our hearts are always right because things will get in your heart and you'll become bitter. You'll be mad at people. You'll be mad at the world. And sometimes people have become mad with God because they didn't purify their hearts. It said, You double-minded. We talked about that at Empire this morning. But having a double mind. You feeling this way one day, and then the next day you feeling like that. You up and you feel good when everything is going right. But when you're going through something, you down. But see, the key with God and being in God, you got to be consistent. So how are you going to be consistent? You got to resist the devil. So, In other words, watch this. This is what God said. Spiritual warfare is more about resisting than fighting. If if, if you don't get nothing else, make sure you get that. You focus so much. We focus so much on fighting the enemy. That's that's what not. Spiritual warfare is really not about fighting. It's really about resisting. See, you, 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 you have to resist the enemy. Because if the enemy is trying to get in me and I resist him, then I won't, I won't bring him along with me. So watch this. If everybody resists, see, the problem happens is when somebody don't, somebody let the devil in. When you in an argument with somebody, or it could be you and a companion, 
or if, even if it's me and my wife, somebody has let the enemy in. Somebody didn't resist. And while you mad at somebody, guess what? The enemy has set a trap out, and he just stepped back and just watched you be upset with somebody. You don't even put your focus on him. You mad at somebody else. You mad at him? You don't want to deal with him? I'm done with you. Oh, see, so y'all get up in here and act like y'all are safe. Y'all will y'all, y'all say, I'm done with somebody in a minute. I ain't dealing with you. Come on now. Y'all, y'all ain't that saved now. I'm fed up. I'm done. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> You've been and told your companion that. You've been and told your wife or your, your husband that. I ain't dealing with you. I'm done. Be upset. Yes, you will. You'll walk right past somebody. Act like you ain't saw them. No, it good and well you saw them. Y'all know I'm right about it. You will act like you ain't saw. You'll, you'll see them, spot them, and then you'll get a head start. You'll see them and they ain't saw you. Oh, you got it down pat. No, it good and well. Or you'll go the other way. <laughs> Watch this. You'll resist the person but not the spirit behind the person. He does, you don't got the armor on. Don't focus on fighting, you got to focus on resisting. So if I resist the enemy, because there's power in agreement, where two or three that are gathered in my name, he'll be in the midst. Where two or three are gathered in his name. That's why one of the key things you'll do is get away from somebody when, when you're at odds with them because the enemy don't want you to touch and agree because there is power in agreement. When you're into it with somebody, the one, one thing you don't want to do is be near them. You don't want to be bothered with them. You don't want to have nothing to do with them. You're going to try to stay as far as away as you can care even if it is your companion. You into it with, with been times with me and my wife, uh, you know, the, uh, not been seeing eye to eye, and you'll be distant. We have been distant for a moment, and then somebody got to pull it together. Somebody, but isn't it, why well, isn't it so, isn't it funny, but it's not funny. Sometimes you know that you're supposed to get it right, but you just don't want to. You know that you should talk it out. You know you should show love. But yet I ain't doing that. Especially if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you know it's not right now. But yet, yet, yet it's hard to to do because you don't want to be near. He says, come near. Come near to God. And God will come near to you. See, 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 we don't come near to him. So spiritual warfare is not so much about fighting. Y'all remember this. It's about what? Resisting. That's what spiritual warfare. See, resist is to refrain from doing or having something. That's tempting or unwise. You got to refrain from doing or having something, you got to resist the enemy. You're not equipped to fight hand-to-hand with the enemy that you cannot see. You're trying to fight the enemy, you can't see him. Especially since that enemy wants nothing more than to distract you from growing in your knowledge of Jesus and walking with him. But instead, you move forward by submitting to God. Submitting to God, Lord, I submit, I surrender. I give up my will, I give up my thoughts, and God, I submit myself to you. I surrender myself to you. You are my Lord, so therefore, I do whatever you tell me to do. If you tell me to get rid of that attitude, guess what? I got to submit to you. We're supposed to submit to God and not the enemy. But 
see, instead you move forward by submitting to God and free yourself of Satan's influence. The goal of spiritual warfare is to resist the devil's schemes as you give yourself to God. Peter, Peter, he reinforces what James said in the letter when he wrote the suffering Christian. I want to go to 1 Peter now. I just talked about what James says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Listen to what it says. It said, be alert and of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a what? A roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stay right there for a minute. Be, first of all, you got to be alert. You got to be aware. Got to be aware of your surroundings. That's what you tell your children. Be alert. You got to know your surroundings. When you come out of a place, go into your vehicle or whatever, you, you always be aware of your surroundings. Because somebody is watching you more than you watching them. Somebody that's somebody that want to do something to you, they watch you before they attack you. They'll watch patterns. That's right. They'll look for where you're most vulnerable. So therefore, Peter says you got to be alert and of a, what, a sober mind. That means you got to have a clear mind. Sober. What's the opposite of sober when you think of sober? The opposite of that is drunk. When you're drunk, your mind is all over the place. Your mind is altered. You've been to say anything when you're drunk. Then it fell anywhere. You woke up the next morning, you're like, man, what did it? What did it? Come on, y'all don't get quiet. Y'all don't act like y'all are. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be sober. Got to be sober. Got to be sober. Can't be intoxicated. Naturally and spiritually. Well, got to make sure you got that thing together. I, I know what it's about. I done been there and I done done that. God had to deliver me from that. So that I can live the abundant life that God, don't y'all get quiet on me now. Live the life that God wants you to live. You got to be able to think right. Got to be able to make sound and not allow the enemy of God. So first of all, you got to be alert. Come on, alert. And you got to have a sober mind. Because the enemy, your enemy, he says, the devil prowls around. He's looking for somebody he can attack. And guess what? He's looking for that person that don't have their armor on. You tell the person that don't got their armor on, the one that's mostly influenced by the enemy. He's looking. He's on his job. He's, he, he will spot you before you spot yourself. He's looking just like this. Who can I get on today? You get up, you in a rush, you ready to get on about your day. You ain't told the Lord. Thank you. You ain't talk to him. You just get up, focusing on, you wake up with yesterday's problems, bringing them over to my what, daily bread. You wake up with yesterday's issues on your mind. So you start out wrong right there. Even if you wake up with it on your mind, you got to deal with it right there. To have you, you, you have to have a sober mind because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Okay, I want to go to verse 9. Watch this. Damn, what does it say? Resist him. Resist him and standing firm. What? In your faith. You got to have faith to believe that, okay, God, I'm supposed to resist the devil. You got to hold your peace and let God deal with everything else. Hold your peace. When you want to tell somebody off and you want to give them the business, you got to hold your peace and shut up before you've been and said something that you don't supposed to say. And you say, Lord, oh, so I wouldn't, Lord, forgive me. You may not ask God to forgive you then, but later on when you get convicted, when you come to yourself, oh, Lord, I don't know why I said that. So you have to, it talked about the enemy roaring like a lion. It said, like a lion, as a lion, but he's not a lion. Jesus is a lion of Judah, from the tribe of Judah. So 
when you look at and do the study of a lion, you can hear the roar of a lion two to five miles out. Look it up later on. When you look at a lion, study the roar of a lion. You can hear them roaring from miles away. And see, that's the word right there. The enemy is not on you. He's not even close to you, but he's roaring from miles away. So when he roar, that will get your attention. That's why the Bible said you have to be alert. When you hear the roar, you got to be alert and know that that's from the enemy. And when I know that that's from the enemy, I know that he's going to be coming around soon. See, sometimes God will give us cues and he'll give us hints, but yet we don't have a sober mind. We're not alert. But the enemy do, he didn't just do it right then. He works his way up to it. And the father, you stay away from your word. The less you have inside of you to help you to resist him. So resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Don't think that you're the only one going through whatever it is that you're going through. Somebody else going through what you're going through, sometimes even ten times worse than what you're going through. You think you got it bad? You think you have challenges? Somebody else has greater challenges. So I said, know that your family of believers throughout the whole entire world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings, but, but Peter says you got to resist him. You got to resist him and you got to stand firm in your faith. Have to allow your faith to go out before you. People often say that good offense is the best defense, okay? But when it comes to the enemy of your soul, the Bible wants you to understand that a good defense is the key to tearing down demonic strongholds. They say that defense wins championships. You got to have good defense if you're going to win the game. And guess what? Every piece of the armor represents defense. There's only one piece of the armor that represents offense. But even with that, you can use it as an offensive weapon and a defensive weapon. But every other piece of the armor is a defensive mechanism. It's a defensive piece of the armor. That you, have to, that you have to use. You have to have it on first in order to use it. So when you resist the enemy, God will take it from there and fight for you. But you're trying to fight the enemy. You're trying to do God's job. And the only thing you have to do is resist. When you resist, he got to go somewhere else. But see, when you entertain him, when he say something, and then he say, well, what you say? You for real? He said that. She said this, and that got your attention. That got your, that got your mind right there. All it takes is just one word, one little conversation from the enemy to deceive, to trick you, and make it appear that something is something, but it's not. And you entertain. See, all it takes is just a little bit of entertainment. It don't take a lot. Because in the, in the book of Genesis, the Bible said that the enemy is crouched right at the door. He's right at the door waiting for you to open the door. Because he don't knock. He going to knock. He's at the door. He come with yourself. Yeah, who is it? You have to be led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit won't allow you to be caught off guard. You got you to gotta have enough sense to look out your blinds, look out the peephole. As soon as you see them, you got to resist them. Don't even entertain. Don't even have a, yeah, what, what you come over here for, what you want. See, right there, you didn't open up a door. Hold your peace and allow the Lord what? To fight your battle. 
But because I got this, I'm going to kill him. You know how you are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Oh, yeah, you done this? Oh, I, uh, yeah, you're going to get this. And you ain't giving them nothing but flesh. You're not giving them no God. You're not even giving them over to God because you're taking matters into your own hand. What did I tell you spiritual warfare is about? Resisting. Resisting means you got to shut it down. Whatever it is, it is not like God. You got to just shut it down. How you shut people down? You'll shut somebody down in a minute. You'll shut them down. I'm done with it. We'll shut everybody down except for the devil. You cut everybody off except for the devil. Listen, I'm, I'm making light of it, but I know I'm in here telling the truth. But it's not against flesh and blood. Even if the enemy is trying to attack your finances, you got to evaluate yourself. Is he got then I cause, or is it season that I'm in? If it's a season that I'm in, okay, enemy, I'm, 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 I'm resisting you. Okay, God, what do you want me to do in this season that I'm in? See, we, 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 we don't do that. We don't go through the necessary steps. We take matters into our, our own hands. See, but when we resist the enemy, God will take it from there. God trying to get it from you. He trying to take it, you know, but you, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to take care of it. You know how somebody try to help you, I say, no, I got it. God is, he, he, he's there. He's trying to take it out of your hands, but you say, no, 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 God, I got this. Because you feel you know what's best. Your emotions have got involved. Your feelings have got involved. And you have removed the Holy Spirit from my body of your life. When the children of Israel we're about to cross the Red Sea. God took care of Pharaoh. They had Pharaoh and his army behind them. And then they had the Red Sea in front of them. God had just brought them out of Egypt. And Pharaoh realized, he said, I didn't let all the slaves, I didn't let all the workers go. The Bible says that Pharaoh said, okay, so now we got to start working ourselves. They were spoiled. God's people were working for them for years. Moses went to him and said, God said, let my people go. But the Bible says that God had hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So it was God's plan. So you get mad at Pharaoh, but God did that. <laughs> you up here get mad at God. I mean, Pharaoh, but, but, but God did that. You get mad at somebody, but God did that. But you didn't resist, you didn't resist him. You let him in in your mind. But yeah, God helped them out of bondage, and here they are. They come up to the Red Sea. Pharaoh behind them. They hear all the chariot. Pharaoh loaded all of them up. They said, come on, we got to get these people back. We're going to have to start working. They were spoiled. God's people were working for them. So you got to stop working for the enemy and start working for God. And see, when, 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 when you allow God to free you, the enemy, he don't like that. When God saved remember me, the enemy didn't like that because I was one of his best soldiers. When I was in the world, I was in the world. I wasn't in church, had one foot in and one foot out, and both of my feet out. My whole body, that's right. My toes, my fingers, my elbow, I, I was all out. Tell the truth and shame the devil. In church, sometimes you just got to be real. That's the problem. You have people making it seem like they done had it together all their life and just lying. Don't try to be right. Just be real with me. That's the problem. You're trying to be right all the time, but all you got to do is just be real with God. God already know. 
So when, 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 when God delivers you and you allow him to do that, the enemy don't like it. So the, the enemy Pharaoh said, okay, hold up. No, we got to get these people back. So but they, had, they were at a crossroad. What are we going to do? We got Pharaoh, he coming. Got this Red Sea. To say that, that, like I always say, you got to have faith to believe in what the Bible says because it's almost like you go on a bluebell beach and you just expecting God to part it. With the natural mind, it don't make sense. Come on now. This is a faith walk. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. We walk by what? Faith and not by sight. They were walking by sight because they were looking at this Red Sea and said, okay, what are we going to do now? God, you brought us out. You only brought us out to bring us to this. I should have stayed in the world. Because people think that when they come on the side for God that everything is going to be good. No. It is good, but you're going to have to go through something. You have to have a level of faith. You have to have a level of trust because you will get attacked. But in the midst of your being attacked, God's got you. Come on and say, God's got me. So the children of Israel, they were at the Red Sea. And listen what Moses said. Take me to Exodus 13, well, Exodus 14, verse number 13. You want to look at the Moses answered the people, do not what? Be afraid. They were afraid. They was wondering how God was going to bring them out. They were at a place where they couldn't do nothing with them, their own strength. Moses answered, answered the people. He told them, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance. Okay? You will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Come on and say today. The Egyptians you see today you will never see again. That's what God told them. In other words, God say, I got you. See, when God tells you, I got you, you got to believe him. You got to take him at his word. Because God will allow you to come up just so that you can trust and depend on him. They couldn't go nowhere else. If you don't go, they was at a crossword road. God, God, God spoke to Moses. First of all, he said, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Because in a situation like that, you got this Red Sea. You got the enemy behind you. You already know how cruel and how evil he is. They were afraid. But God had to bring comfort. Like God is trying to comfort you today. He tells them again to what? Stand firm. Put on the armor and so that you can stand firm. Firm. I started in the New Testament, but I had to bring you back to the old. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm. If you stand firm, you're going to see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Now, verse number 14. I want to I take you. Verse number 14 said, the Lord will fight for you. Only thing you need to do is just be still. God can't fight because you're all over the place. God, God trying to fight, but you're doing too much. You know how you say, you do, you, you, you extra. All the extra stuff that you do, oh, Lord, I just, oh, God, I don't know how. Just extra. Oh, God, I don't know what you're going to do. Oh, God, I don't know how you're going to bring me out. Oh, God, I don't know. Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, God say, just, I got this. Reason why? Because your mind is not sober. You're not alert. You're not aware. You're focusing on the roar versus focusing on God. You hear it from miles away. It's not even close. You just hear it. Some of the things that we go through, it's, it's really, we just hear it. See, because you can hear something and be affected by what you see, and it haven't even touched you physically. That's, see, that's what anxiety is, worrying about something that hasn't happened yet. It ain't even happened to you yet. And you're all over the place. 
all over the place. Anxious. It ain't happened yet. That's why the Bible says be anxious what for? Nothing. Be anxious for nothing but through prayer and what? Supplication. So in other words, by talking to God, by conversing, see, in order for you to talk to God right, you got to resist the, the enemy so you won't hear both of them at the same time. God trying to talk to you, but then you hear it and you see it. And the enemy is talking, watch this, the enemy is talking through what you see. Ain't said a word, but he's talking because you can see things that talk to you. Right? You can see somebody and it's like they're talking to you. You can see somebody and it lights you up, and then you can see somebody and it can just turn everything off. Times I see my wife, I saw she came in the house the other day, it was beautified up. I said, she just got up. Oh, oh, oh. Or over. I said, baby, you look good. <laughs> Ain't said a word, but she just came in the house. I said, good God almighty. <laughs> yeah, I can say that about my wife. <laughs> That's right. But sometimes circumstances, they talk to you, and it ain't even touch you physically. The enemy is roaring as a lion. You hear him, but he ain't touched you yet. And God is trying to say, be still. The Lord will fight for you. They used to tell us when we was in elementary, when a fire drill came, if you ever caught on fire, the three things, come on, y'all know what I'm saying, stop, drop, and roll. And let a fire come, and some call that, that's going to be the last thing from your mind. You, ah! I'm serious, you ain't, you're going to forget about everything that you was taught in school. Yeah, I've been to jump right out the, uh, when, you know, been in, you've been and lost your mind. Only thing you got to do, first of all, you got to stop. And you thinking I'm on fire? You want me to stop? Stop, <laughs> drop, and roll. That's a word right there. You got to stand still. God say, I got this, but you're doing so much in your mind. Your mind, you can be doing so much in your mind to where you won't even allow God to come in. The Lord will fight for you. He's going to fight for you. You need only to be still. That's the only thing that you need to do is just be still. The only way you're able to be still is through trust. When you trust God the way that you're supposed to, God ain't going nowhere. Okay, I'm going through this. Yeah, God, you brought me out. You're the same God yesterday, today, what, and forevermore. God, you ain't changed. Just like you brought me out of that, you can bring me out of this. See, every time we go through something and God brings us out, that is supposed to increase our faith. Because the Bible said we go, we go from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. So we go faith to what? To faith. So last year's faith, Okay, got you, or, or yesterday's faith, whatever faith in the past, it got you to where you're at right now. So you, you, you go to a new level of faith. Every time that you hear the word, actually you, your faith should be increased because faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes from what? The word of God. So every time you hear the word, whether it's Bible plan or whether you just reading it, the word for yourself, midweek manna, Sunday morning, every time you hear the word, your faith is supposed to be increased. Because we go from faith to faith. And so what we do, we, we're trying to operate on a faith that has expired. You're not rotating your faith. You're operating on an expired faith, almost like you're drinking expired milk. And some people, if it's one day before the expiration date, they're throwing it away. 
And when it get close to the expiration date and you look at it and they say that, what do you do? You open to see if it's good. Some of y'all will press y'all luck and just go and roll with it. And some of y'all, y'all not going to even do it. Y'all going to throw it away if it get two days before the expiration date. You be you get so desperate, you you you'll want to eat that cereal so bad. And if it's on that day or the day after and you smell it and it's good, and you'll go ahead. And, Lord, I ask you to bless this in Jesus' name. You've been to say it, oh God made dirt, dirt don't hurt. It ain't even been on the dirt. There. You let some of that piece of candy drop on the ground. And you turn around, ain't nobody looking. Lord, I, you bless this right now. God made dirt, and dirt don't hurt. See, this generation, y'all may not know nothing about that, but that's what we grew up on. And everybody just said that. Y'all don't look at me like y'all ain't never said God made dirt, and dirt don't hurt. Let that be that last piece of candy, that last grape or whatever it is, and you want it, and ain't nobody looking at you. You a little kid. You growing up, you'll bless that. You might not have said no prayer all your life, but you let that fall on the ground. Yeah, let you want some bad enough. It gives like you, that's the worst place to be is to be desperate for something. Because you'll let your standards down. You'll start accepting everything. You'll accept everybody. You get desperate for money. You get desperate for a man. You get desperate for a lady. Y'all not talking to me. You lower your standard and you'll bend and accept everything for your flesh to be satisfied. You don't let your guards down. Don't get desperate. Get desperate for Jesus. That's the only person that you need to be desperate for. Lord, I need more of you. If you take everything else away, I don't want you to be taken away from me. But when we're, when we're not alert, when our minds are not sober, when we're spiritually intoxicated, we're spiritually like my wife used to say, inebriated. And my wife used to say that, all the, you know, big words to you when we first met. And all that. I said, what what you say? <laughs> She'd be talking and, you know, what? I told her once, years ago, I don't even know, we was, I said, listen, save all that for an interview or something. What did you say? But see, God was bringing me with somebody I was trying to, I married up. You better know who you get with. You don't get with somebody that's going to bring you down. You get with somebody that's going to take you higher. She has something to offer me that I didn't have. Y all, y all, I'm teaching now. That's relationship 101, marriage 101 now. When you, when you get connected, you want to get somebody that's either on the same level or they're going to take you higher. Because if not, you're going to go down, down. And as they say, y'all going to be down like four flat tires. Only thing that's down is the enemy. God is up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. Y'all not talking to me now. So we have to understand that all we need to do is be still. Come on and say, Lord, help me to be still. Lord, help me to be still. But you got to remember, remember to resist. Okay. You got to resist. Come on and say, Lord, help me to resist. Spiritual warfare is not, it's not about, it's not about fighting. And I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty much wrapping it up. I got so, so much. I almost knew I wasn't going to get through this. Because God was just, he was, he was ministering me and dealing with me. And I told my wife on my job, my, I think it was Saturday or Friday when that stranger that I met on my job, he said that somebody had passed away in his family. And he got to talking about that he needed to be close to God, you know, uh, so that he can get to where he, he needs to be. And he got to talking about faith. He, he was in the aisle. I was at work. Got to talking about faith, and it like it lit up something in me. 
I said, we walk by faith and not by sight. A complete stranger just came talking to me. I think it was Friday or Saturday. It was one of them days. I can't remember when I told you. I told my wife, and I, I, I know she was like, mm, you talking my ear off. But I was just excited. You know how you get something excited, something happened, and I was telling her, oh, I just saw this man. He confirmed. I told him, I said, just talked about that at Bible study. And, and he switched over. This is God, it's the honest truth. He said, because, yeah, in, in Ephesians 6, I said, up. I said, I'm talking about that on Sunday. So God was giving me confirmation right there. We right in the middle of the aisle. We talking about God. People looking at us and everything. Sometimes you don't got to care on your job or not, especially if somebody open up the conversation because you got to be careful about talking about religion on your job. But if you open the door, I'm going to walk through that door now. You don't want me to talk about God, you better keep that door closed. But when you open the door, guess what? I'm going to stick my foot right on in that door. Why? See, we got to know what door to go in. Because somebody can open up a door of conversation that, that's just gossip. And I said it before, y'all can sit up here and act like it's not. But gossip, sometimes it sounds good to the natural ear. Some gossip that really ain't about nothing. See, we got to resist it. You got to resist the enemy. You got to know what to resist. But let somebody come to something with something that, you know, really ain't about nothing. They begin to tell you, you know, and you, you'll be like, okay, what? For real? That did happen? And that's all it is. For real? You lying. That didn't happen. When that happened? What? For real? Oh, no, it didn't. No, no, you, you kid. When, when that happened? He did what? And this happened too? Y'all, come on now. Don't act like y'all don't get like that. You have to, you got to resist the devil. And then guess what? You hear about it, and then the next person, hey, man, guess what? And then when you tell it, you mix it all up. You put your spin on it. You didn't add something else to it that they didn't tell you. And then, that, then the next person, they tell someone, that's how something get all. If I was to start with Minister Rogers and I just told him three words and asked everybody to tell by the time it got over here, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. Because you're going to add something to it or you're going to take something away from it. But you got to resist. Because y'all not y'all may not want to admit now somebody could be talking to you and it, it's a it really not job or whatever it is, sometimes you it, ears. The Bible talks about that, about the itching ears. So sometimes we just have to disconnect. Sometimes you just gotta shut it down. But see, you can't do that if you don't have the armor on to be able to resist. I'm going to go down, I'm going to break every piece of the armor down. Not going not to be today. Not going to be today, but what you are to get from today is that you have to resist. If you don't get nothing else, you got to get that. You got to resist it. I don't care who it is. You, you got to have enough courage, enough boldness. I don't even care if you're a close friend, your relative, your spouse. You got you to shut it down. And watch this. Sometimes somebody might get mad at you for resisting. They think that you acting crazy and then that you, you tripping, that you fake and you phony. No, I love you, but I, I just got to resist it. I can't let that get in my spirit. You let something get in your spirit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess you up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have your mind all messed up. It, it's going to throw you all off. It, it, you, get, you let things get in your spirit. When, some, when you hear something, I'm telling you, when you hear something, you have to resist. You got to get rid of it. If you get rid of it, it's going to go with you everywhere you go. Somebody could have told something or you could have saw something in the morning time and it'll still be with you in the evening time if you don't resist you have to resist and stand still and let God fight for you 
all he needs you to do is to resist. See, when you resist, you resist it, you walk away from it, and you leave it. You leave it for God. Whatever that thing is that you know is not right, whatever that thought is, you got to cast down every imagination, the Bible says, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You have to resist it. Cast it down, those thoughts, those imaginations. Resist it. Cast it down. Get rid of it. And make it become obedient to Christ. In order to do that, you have to surrender. If the police is after you and they say, stop, surrender, what you got? You got to stop. You got to stop whatever it is that you're doing. If you don't, there's going to be a whole lot of other things that you're going to have to deal with. But the first thing you have to do is you have to stop. But when you're under pressure, when everything is not going right, your mind is running rampant. That's why you have to be alert. Your mind has to be alert. Got to be sober-minded. intoxicated you talking to the devil you trying to tell the devil off I don't like I ain't never liked you I've been should have told y'all know how that uncle is at the family reunion come in and just hey yeah hey and y'all see him y'all looking for a good joke a look good good laugh y'all know everybody got that family member somebody in their family Uncle Earl, Uncle Joe, Uncle Uncle Jeff. Hey, cuz. How you been doing? Y'all, y'all know how family. Y'all, y'all get in here. Y'all just act like y'all. You don't even want to be. You do want to bother because you want to get a good life. Some some of y'all just be tickled at that that uncle, that relative. That you know that they're about to come at every family function. Some of y'all go to the family function just to see Uncle Joe. To get a good laugh, to get a good cut up. And then he pull you into that and you cutting up right with him. And you supposed to be the light. For real, that didn't happen, Uncle. You feel Uncle that happened? You just love to get them to going. And you say that, Uncle, uh, Uncle, get to going and of that. And if you don't be careful yet, that's right, instigate. The next thing you know, both of y'all are just uh, somewhere that y'all shouldn't be. Verbally and mentally. But what do you got to do? You got to resist. You're bad. It just lets you know you know who you are. In whom you are. Thank God. I pray that you resist the enemy, those that are watching. I pray that you resist the enemy on today. Whatever it is that you've been dealing with and struggling with, I pray that that, that, that chain is broken, that cycle is broken, that repeated behavior is broken in Jesus' name. You accept him into your life. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior over your life. Confess your sins. Submit to him. Surrender to him. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Get to a church. I, I, we have live, but I always encourage in person, in house. Live is there for you to watch, but it's nothing like being in the presence physically of God. This is the way that, that we have ministry now, live. And I was mentioning an impact service, uh, uh, impact class this morning. Some things are just not going to go back the way that they were, so you got to make adjustments. But it's nothing like being in the house of God, with the laying of the hands, being in the atmosphere, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the same Holy Spirit that's here right now is the same Holy Spirit that's with you wherever you are. God is omnipresent, meaning that he's here right now and he's there with you. That's why you're able to talk to him right where you are. Give your life over to him and surrender to him right now where you are. Resist the enemy, the Bible says, and he will flee. If you resist him, he has to go somewhere else. 
but you got to have your armor on. You have to have the word of God with inside of you in order for you to stand firm and to resist the enemy. So we thank God. Listen, next week, we want to encourage you to come out if you're free. Uh, it's Resurrection Sunday, what we know in the world as Easter Sunday. It's our youth, amen, Sunday, our young adult Sunday. Praise the Lord. Our young adult, we're going to stick to what God has given us. I look forward to um, a great service in the Lord. They have some things, I believe, some baskets and candy, different things that they'll be doing. I believe maybe some speeches and all that. So we want you all to come, even those that are in here right now. Come on back out next week, and we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Minimize the madness. That's their theme. Minimize the madness. Next week, starting at 11 a.m. And the last thing that I want to do before we shut down our uh, virtual services for you to give. I want to encourage you to give to sow into the ministry on today. Okay, if you are a tither, uh, give your 10%. If you're giving an offering, and be cheerful in whatever which one you do, whether it's your tithes or whether it's your free will offering. There's no certain amount on the free will offering. But we encourage you to sow for you to give. You can give uh, RBM Church. Cash App, that's one way that you can give. Or you can give by Givelify. You can find us at Restoration Bethel Ministries on Givelify. If you have that app, download it to where you can keep track of the history uh, of your giving. And so we want you to take advantage of that for those of you that are uh, watching live right now. Hallelujah. We have baptism. Uh, on the first Sunday in April, we'll be having baptism. We have a christening as well on the first Sunday. And we also have ordination of Elder Henderson.